Well, welcome back to the Chelsea Academy Challenge for episode 4, the conclusion of our second season. And to say that the first half of the season went well would be an understatement, but can we see it through? Having survived the World Cup, we begin the year against Blackburn, whose return to the Premier League hasn't gone amazingly well so far, and we continue that trend for them with a 3-0 win. Our happy new year continues as Manchester United lose as well, meaning our lead jumps to 12 points. I don't think it's going to be a particularly active transfer window, as I've already sorted out all of our expiring contracts, so we'll have no repeat of last year. I'd like to get my business done in the summer, so unless something massive happens, I'm not planning any moves. We do of course get some offers though, including laughably Spurs bidding for Hakim Ziyech. He starts for us every week and we're top of the league. Who on the Spurs board thought that this would work in any sense? And then they bid for one of our best regens. I mean seriously, Inter Milan who Thomas Tuchel now manages come in for Edouard Mendy and are also swiftly shut down. I mean what is the thought process from anyone here? We do sign one player though, regen Andy Harwood, a Swedish English left back from IFK Gothenburg. My scouts have found for £800,000. Pretty slim regen picking so far. The second 11 breeze past Hartlepool in the FA Cup third round. We go behind 30 seconds in against Southampton, yet still end up 6-2 winners in the definition of scoring too early. And then Man United draw and Man City draw with Liverpool. And this is just getting ridiculous now, with 13 points clear in January. I have no idea what's happening, and it doesn't end against Sheffield United in a game which brings up 60 points. We face Aston Villa in my 100th match in charge, and we're not great, but we still win 2-0. I mean, I'm not saying I want to drop points, obviously, but maybe in the spirit of fairness. We continue the run against Leeds, despite Lukaku missing a penalty for the fourth time this season. And it's another masterclass from Kai Havertz, who wants a new contract, so I just give him whatever, just keep playing well. And we do, as we beat Brighton 3-0. I can't really dress up many of these games, we're really good and we just keep winning. We've reached the end of January and we still have maximum points. All I can really do is say I swear I'm not safe scumming and I have no idea how this keeps happening. Due to the limited games, they didn't do manager of the month for November or December, but they certainly did for January, and guess who won? Lukaku gets player of the month as well. We should probably talk about the fact that he literally has scored 30 goals in the Premier League so far, and it's only February. What a player he is. We face Spurs first. Normally, we obliterate Spurs, and today will be no exception. Mbappe opens things up. Mount then scores a beauty before Havertz makes it three. Lukaku adds two to his tally, and while Spurs do get two back, it's just utterly irrelevant. We move to 72 points. Manchester City are now our closest to challengers. The second 11 almost contrived to lose to Hull at home in the FA Cup fourth round in an extremely baffling game, but we rescue ourselves. Kepa is just awful sometimes though. Man City complete their game in hand and then win the Friday game, so we're now only 10 points behind us, so we need to beat Manchester United. I do like a fast start, but to score literally 20 seconds in is really taking things to the extreme. Then Lukaku scores again to underline his hatred for his former club. Mendy makes several world-class saves and we win again. 75 points. We're 26 points clear of Liverpool who have absolutely collapsed. The first leg of our Champions League knockout game against Copenhagen is a 3-2 win in Denmark. Not ideal, but should hopefully be enough to see us through. We beat West Ham 4-1 in a display which leaves me running low on superlatives. It's beyond ridiculous now. We've guaranteed top four already in February. How early is it possible to actually win the title out of interest? We scored seven against Burnley last time, and this time it's only five. Absolutely pathetic, really. That brings up 81 points, a tally which has won titles before. Our lead isn't getting any bigger, though, as while Liverpool and Man United have imploded, Man City have decided on getting their act together so we have to keep going. The thing is, as indescribably incredible as this is, we literally can only get worse. It's a new month and you know what that means folks, it's another manager of the month. My mantelpiece is getting somewhat full, but hey, keep them coming. And another for Lukaku as well. We face Liverpool in a game which doesn't seem to matter as much as they normally do, although we need a win or else the gap will drop as City keep on winning. It's not quite as brutal as the Anfield game, indeed Liverpool seem extremely passive and deflated throughout, which is understandable. They had no highlights as we dominated and they defended. Mbappe gets the breakthrough in the first half with a classy finish before Kai Havertz sealed another 3 points. 84 points, 10 games to go, another big test ticked off. 
I'm pretty confident ahead of the home leg against Copenhagen and indeed as soon as Werner scores it's a procession. We end the night with 4 and the tie with 7. We then face Leicester twice in a row and we start with yet another win in the league. We move to 87 points but City are on a ridiculous winning streak of their own so we're still only 13 points ahead. Our second youth intake looked an improvement on last year with left back Carl Malone apparently a generational talent and certainly he has generational eyebrows while Brathwaite and Bradley Green look decent too. The second Leicester game is the FA Cup fifth round and we win again to set up a quarter final with Aston Villa which takes place immediately afterwards, but not before the Champions League quarter final draw where we get, yep, you guessed it, Liverpool. Although that prospect doesn't fill me with the same dread of last season. But then what's this? Unbelievable. We end the month with a defeat. An actual defeat. Incredible scenes as we somehow bin off a lead despite dominating to lose to Aston Villa in the FA Cup quarter final. A poor showing from Tamori and Mendy enabling them to win. You know what? I'm absolutely furious. Our first game since September we haven't won and yet it's kind of a relief. Shame about the potential treble though. And it's been so long since we've done anything other than win, I am a bit concerned that defeat to Villa might derail us ahead of the run-in. It might seem absurd, but I can absolutely see us bottling this to City. We also only get one player in the goal 50 this time in the form of Rayan Cherky, who I haven't used at all. Sorry, Rayan. We need to get back to winning ways, so to claim manager of the month again for March will certainly help, not least as Pep won more games. We face Brentford first, Kante bangs in an opener before they equalise. Are we dropping points for the first time? Nope. Lukaku scores a penalty and then hudson Adoy seals it with a screamer. 90 points on the board. I think we need four wins to seal it as City win again. How have we got 90 points with eight games left and we still haven't won the league? That does secure Champions League qualification though and the board announced an initial 118 million to spend. Nice. And it's the Champions League up next. I want to win obviously but it's a bit of a distraction from getting the league done. Kylian Mbappe definitely wants to win and evidently fired up fires us into an early lead. But it doesn't last long as Mohamed Salah scores an extremely soft penalty. Lukaku hits the woodwork in the second half but doesn't miss his next chance chance with this disgustingly good effort which gives us a very narrow lead in the tie. A trip to fifth place Arsenal in between is far from ideal. Before the game my assistant recommends we do a team meeting to tell them they're not expected to win which might be the worst advice of all time. Thanks Salt. Ben Chilwell getting injured 10 minutes in is worse though. It's a very dull game. We do eventually win a penalty though which Lukaku this time converts and then we look to hold on to grind out another vital win but then with literal seconds left we allow Reese Nelson clean through to somehow miss an open goal and we hold on luck certainly on our side three more wins needed and Chilwell luckily is only out for a week will it continue we go to Anfield for the Champions League second leg and grab an early lead through another classy Mbappe finish but then a moronic pass from Mason Mount of all people gifts them an equaliser shortly after the break Salah scores and that ends up meaning extra time we push forward Mount spins and finds Timo Werner who calmly gives us the lead in the tie he then has the perfect chance to seal it and absolutely bottles it. Van Dijk then immediately equals things up and we go to penalties. Werner completes his hero to zero transition by missing the first one and then after everyone else scores it falls to Ross Barkley to keep us in and he hits the bar and we're out. How we haven't won that I have no idea but we've been knocked out of the Champions League by Liverpool yet again. Timo Werner, what do you say? Oh well, we have to keep going to make sure we win the league. Norwich at home is a must win and we do. It's an absolute bloodbath. Lukaku gets yet another hat-trick as we destroy them 7-0. I don't know what's more insane, the fact Lukaku has 44 goals in the league so far or the fact that that's only two ahead of Erling Haaland. Wolves are next and it's another win. City win again of course but we reach 99 points and we now just need one win from our last five games to be champions. 33 wins is unsurprisingly a new Premier League record. We face Fulham at Stamford Bridge knowing victory will hand us the title. Very convenient for the fans this one. Mbappe starts things off, Kante doubles it, then Lukaku of course grabs one for himself. Mbappe gets the fourth as well with a wonderful goal and we end up with six and with that, the title. I mean, it's about time. 102 points being needed to seal the title is absurd, but we did it. Even with City's run, it's still been an absolute procession. Literally, as 33 games in, we still somehow have a 100% record. 
an absolute masterclass from start to finish from every single one of these boys. It's a shame we're out of the cups, but we do still have an unbeaten season at least on the line, and City, now out of the race, are next, and our 100% record dies in flames. It was an even game and therefore result in a draw. I forgot what one of those even was, but we do at least remain unbeaten. And we remain unbeaten in Manager of the Month as well. Take that, Pep. We need to secure the Invincible season, but I want to keep players happy, so I fully rotate to face Championship-bound Blackburn, and they show why they don't play as much, as we only grind out a 2-0 win. This actually extends our lead for the first time in months, though, as City lose. Southampton stand no real chance, and so we face Everton on the final day with an unbeaten season up for grabs. And despite some early scares, a Christian Pulisic hat-trick seals it. Invincible. Just two points off the maximum possible. An absolute exhibition of a season from start to finish. It's just fantastic. What more can you possibly say? I really didn't expect this to happen at any point, and certainly not in the second season, but... Wow, let's just enjoy it while it lasts. Our best 11 is bafflingly not what you'd expect as the game puts Pulisic and Grilic in over Mbappe and Kante, but Lukaku wins the Chelsea Player of the Year after getting 57, yes, 57 goals, while Mount gets Young Player after getting 30, yes, 30 assists. Incredible for the pair of them, and some insane contributions for everyone else as well. Chilwell, Havertz and James in particular. The achievement of an unbeaten season is all the more mind-blowing, especially in the context that Manchester City got 96 points. We scored 139 goals and had a goal difference of 120, conceding just 19 all season in the league. Our points tally is obviously a new divisional record that will never be beaten unless someone manages to win all 38 games. We also get to destroy Arsenal's claim to fame as well. Next season, the board want more of the same, but literally, how do we surpass this? We just have to maintain it, which will be tough. Lukaku wins both Player of the Year awards as well as the Golden Boot. Harry Kane finishes third with 30 goals, a tally that would win in most other years, but a full 20 behind him. Mendy wins a deserved golden glove with 24 clean sheets, and we nearly complete a clean sweep of the team of the year. Lukaku also wins the UEFA's Best Player Award and the European Golden Shoe. It's hard to really quantify how well we've done. Everyone's happy. The players, the board, the accountants. Obviously the FA Cup and Champions League were disappointments, but we were two points off the maximum possible in the league. So this is probably the greatest season ever, but all we can do is keep it up. Can we do even better next year? Maybe, but it's certainly going to be tough. But hey, at least there's no Club World Cup this summer.